Changes to the forecast ahead as rain chances have increased for today and tomorrow, along with the risk of flooding for some. Let's talk about it in this hump day edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer. It's Wednesday, the 2nd of July, 2025. As always, if you appreciate our forecast information, my humor, or the fact I'm just Baldy and Chief, a big old thumbs up button. If you haven't already, click subscribe to get notified when we publish new Texas weather content. We are seeing changes to the forecast occur at a pretty rapid pace now for today and tomorrow, and the result is increased rain chances, along with the potential for some localized flooding. The reason we're seeing that is the upper-level high-pressure heat dome that is establishing itself in the eastern Gulf and around Florida has come in weaker than weather model data was predicting. Now, like we said earlier this year, with the loss of some upper air data, weather balloons, etc., some of these models are going to become a little less reliable and unpredictability was going to increase. Well, one element of that is what you're going to experience over the next day or two now, as a weaker upper-level heat dome means more of rain chances, especially since that heat dome is going to be centered over the eastern Gulf. We're going to be on the western periphery of that, and since that upper-level high pressure is going to have less of an influence on our weather, we're instead going to deal with increased rain chances. And In fact, we may see a weak storm system materialize, a weak area of low pressure that may actually enhance rain chances tomorrow and tomorrow night across parts of the hill country, central Texas and south-central Texas. We'll show you that now. Here's the high-rise rapid refresh model going through today, tonight, into Thursday night. Uh, you can see, yeah, we've got clouds. We've got rain chances across several areas of the state. Most of the state will see cloud cover at times over the next two days. Going into tomorrow afternoon, you can see we actually see some pretty heavy thunderstorms with heavy rain fire up. Brazos Valley, Central Texas, South Central Texas, the Concho Valley, the big country into the hill country. Now, going into tomorrow night, you might notice how that activity actually continues and doesn't move very much across parts of the hill country, south central Texas, and the Concho Valley. Now, this model is unlikely to have the exact location of that heavier rain exactly pinpoint correct, but that is certainly a feature of what we may be dealing with tomorrow night with a area of low pressure that tries to materialize. And if that happens, this is pretty classic for the summer months across parts of the hill country where we can see a small area of heavy rain and thunderstorms materialize and just not move very much. And wherever we see that, if that actually unfolds tomorrow night, we're going to be looking at a localized but potentially significant flash flood threat materialize. Uh, where this happens. And I can't exactly tell you where this is going to happen. You know, I can't say that this is going to be in San Antonio. I can't say if this is going to be 70 miles west of San Antonio. But the potential is certainly there for localized, but potentially impactful flash flooding with someone getting five plus inches of rain in the span of a few hours. Is that a guarantee? No. Could we easily just not have that happen? Sure. But at the same time... We've seen what happens when we get localized but very heavy rainfall over parts of Flash Flood Alley, the hill country, south central Texas. So we're going to keep a very close eye on that. But the chance for heavy rain, thunderstorms, and maybe flooding is becoming more of a potential hazard going into Thursday afternoon, Thursday night, and Friday morning across parts of the Concho Valley, hill country, central Texas, and south central Texas. To be clear... More of you will miss out than be impacted or hit by these storms in terms of significant flooding, but we need to be very mindful of that. Localized gusty winds and, of course, dangerous cloud-to-ground lightning are expected with all thunderstorms over the next few days when thunder roars go indoors. Now, because we're going to remain more, well, moist and such, Fire danger across the state over the next several days is low to moderate. Now, this is the wildfire outlook from the Texas A&M Forest Service, and this typically accounts for the potential for a larger scale wildland incident. Sure, we're still seeing grass fires. We're still seeing some issues. We had a 
fire up in the Arklatex yesterday, but most of these fires are on the smaller side and are able to be contained in the initial operating period, you know, the day thereof. So, here's a look at the upper air pattern going into the upcoming week. Now, this is the geopotential heights anomalies heading over the next week. I think this may be a little easier for folks to view. This takes into account what things typically are looking like this time of year, and then the anomalies. So, notice how that upper level heat dome, kind of over the eastern parts of the state, the Gulf over the next few days, but then going into next week, that heat dome really builds up over the southwestern and southern United States. You can see the anomalies or height rises. That is a way to see, yeah, we're going to see higher pressures, subsidence, or sinking air aloft. And it should start to shut rain chances down going into next week. And with that, we're also likely to see an uptick in temperatures. Now, initially, we thought that would happen late this week. Well, clearly not as much as we expected, so that's why we still have rain chances. That's why temperatures aren't going to be as warm compared to what they could be. But all indications are going into next week. That heat dome, especially across the southwestern United States, is going to become quite rambunctious and potent. So with that, we should start to see more summer-like conditions with lower chances for pop-up storms and higher temperatures. Here's the longer-range American weather model going through the weekend early next week. Now, here's Friday. You can see, for the most part, isolated to maybe scattered storms. Western half of Texas, Friday morning, Friday afternoon, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. After that, it looks like most of the precipitation should start to diminish, resulting in a fairly good chance outdoor activities will be unaffected going into Friday evening, the 4th of July, Independence Day, etc., Warm conditions, yes, but hopefully that means we're not going to be dealing with too much in the way of impacts from thunderstorms. Going through the weekend, early next week, you can see this model still has some afternoon diurnal pop-up activity across the state. Not as much as we've dealt with this week, for sure, but a couple isolated pop-up showers and storms certainly possible, but by far a majority of the state remaining dry and warm. As we continue towards Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, those rain chances should start to decrease further, especially across the western parts of the state who have been dealing with monsoonal activity for the last couple weeks. That looks like it's going to begin diminishing. Here's forecast rain totals through 7 a.m. Monday from the Weather Prediction Center. Now, these are regionalized. Don't nitpick exactly where the rain totals are shown. And again, you can see... Overall, the western half of the state through 7 a.m. Monday, that's where we expect the best chance for rainfall. Is it going to be as widespread as what this graphic shows? Probably not, but at least gives you an idea of where most of the rain chances will be through the weekend. Now, again, like I said, there is the potential for very localized but considerably higher rain totals than what this graphic is showing across central Texas, south central Texas, the hill country, and the Concho Valley tomorrow into tomorrow night and Friday morning. And if that becomes more of a expectation versus a possibility, uh, we're going to see that reflected in further updates on the rain total graphic. Tropical weather-wise, National Hurricane Center monitoring a tropical wave over the eastern Gulf. That'll be moving over Florida and into the western Atlantic off the Carolina coast over the next few days. That system now has a medium potential of becoming a tropical depression with the potential for increased heavy rain chances, some rough surf, higher rip current danger across the eastern seaboard of the United States going towards the weekend. At this point, it does not look like a system that's going to be one of these rapidly intensifying things that becomes a hurricane, but eh, it may earn itself a name. We'll see. High temperatures over the next several days across the state. Today, 70s West Texas, the Permian Basin, out into the davis Guadalupe Mounds, thanks to rain chances and cloud cover. 84 this afternoon in El Paso, 78 in Lubbock and Plainview, 79 in Amarillo. Eastern half of the state, that's where it's going to be hot today. Highs in the mid to upper 90s, 97 DFW. We're looking at about 96 in Houston, 90 in 
San Antonio, 96 in Austin. Tomorrow, similar story, maybe a little less hot across eastern parts of the state. And you can see 70s and 80s across the western half of Texas. Definitely not bad for high temperatures for the 3rd of July. Going into Friday, you can see we start warming up as we start to see a decrease in overall rain chances and cloud cover. Still, with pop-up showers and storms possible, we'll see. Otherwise, high temperatures in the 80s and 90s, quite humid weather continuing. Saturday, that's when we start to really head into more of a summer-like pattern. We're going to see highs across the state, mostly in the low to mid and upper 90s. A few triple digits possible, El Paso back to near 100 degrees after monsoon and less hot weather. Going into Sunday, similar story across the state of Texas. So... What's that mean beyond that? Here is the precipitation outlook for the 7th through 11th of July. You can see eh, we may stay a little wetter, perhaps, and you can see better rain chances comparatively. Again, it's July, one of our driest months typically, so even the chance for isolated pop-up storms is going to show up on this map as above average precip chances. That may begin shifting towards eastern parts of the state where the influence of an upper-level heat dome setting up over the southwestern United States will be slightly less than western Texas. We'll see, right? Climate Prediction Center temperature outlook, 7th through 11th. Eh, I mean, we'll see. Truth be told, if the GFS is, and Euro are right and we see that upper-level heat dome establish itself, we're probably going to see things become warmer. But it's summer. I mean, if we have below-average temperatures out in the Big Bend, it's going to be because temperatures are in the 80s instead of 90s. Not all that impactful when it comes to July weather. So... That'll be it for your Wednesday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. We will keep a very close eye on weather changes the next day or two in case we do have a localized, more considerable threat of flash flooding arise due to heavy rain chances. Again, by far, a majority of the state not going to deal with flooding, anything like that. But we do need to be mindful that localized impacts are certainly possible, and we'll be watching for that carefully. Of course, all thunderstorms produce dangerous cloud-to-ground lightning, and when thunder roars, go indoors. But in terms of the July 4th forecast, isolated to scattered storms late morning through the mid-afternoon, becoming less common as we head towards dinner time, leading to what should be a mostly pleasant Friday evening across the state of Texas. As always, you can get your local weather forecast, interactive weather radar daily, Texas weather roundups, and more in the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. Just search for Texas Storm Chasers or you download apps for your device. We'll keep an eye on the forecast. Y'all have a great Wednesday. Stay cool. God bless.